Hi everyone, so in this video I'm going to teach you how to repair a no power motherboard or a dead motherboard step by step using the multimeter. I'm going also to teach you how to troubleshoot the short circuit in the motherboard and I'm going to share with you my method that I use to find any short circuit in just seconds. But please, before diving into the course, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share the video with other people like you. So let's get started. So this is the motherboard that we gonna diagnose and troubleshoot step by step. So as you can see here, basically, let's first take a, a look to this motherboard and to its component. Basically here we have the processor and we have the ICH. So the North Bridge and the graphic card are integrated in the processor. Okay. And here we have the ICH. Basically the purpose of the ICH in every motherboard is to control all ports and connectors in the motherboard. So if you find, for example, that the ports are not worked or two of them or three of them are not worked, means you have problem with the ICH or the search bridge. So then here, as you can see, we have the SIO or the Super IO. This IC basically is the responsible for the whole power in the motherboard okay then we have the bios the basic input output system as you can see the bios as you can see contain eight pin please never confuse between the bios and mosfet so here we have bios and over here we have mosfets as you can see so always the bios is bigger the MOSFET okay for this this is not MOSFET why because we have here U so U the reference U stand for an IC as you can see we have here U this is an IC U here this is an IC also we have here U3 for this IC we have here U16 for this IC but for MOSFET as you can see here we have Q as you can see PQ or Q so do not confuse between MOSFET and BIOS. So the BIOS has is bigger than, than the MOSFET and sometimes we can find that the BIOS contain a pin over it. Like this example for example. Here we have a BIOS, we have this blue pen, and over here we have MOSFET. Do you see? The BIOS is bigger than the MOSFET. Here we have another motherboard. As you can see, we have here the BIOS. Do you see? Here we have a pin, okay? A pink color. So this is a very good tip that I want to share with you. And also the BIOS, you will find usually the BIOS near to the Super IO and to the ICH. So these three components are usually next to each other. So ICH or search bridge, the SIO and the BIOS. So as you can see here also in the motherboard, we have the BIOS next to ICH and we have the super IO over here. The same also for this motherboard, as you can see, we have the BIOS over here, we have ICH and the super IO is directly here in the back, as you can see, okay? This is the SIO and over here, as you can see, we have the BIOS and the ICH. So then here we have the controller for the audio, or, okay, audio controller for this ports or connectors. If you have a bad, for example, if these connectors are not working properly, means you have problem, you should check the audio controller. So basically here we have the DC jack connector over here. We have the battery connector and next to battery connector and DC jack connector, we have the 
power IC or the charge IC as you can see over here. So this is the charge IC and here we have two switches. Okay, if you have a problem, if one of the switches are bad, 19 volt will not pass to the charge IC, then the motherboard will stop working. Okay, we're gonna see all this in the next slides. And here, as you can see always, when you find inductors and capacitors means you have a circuit here basically this is the 3 volt and 5 volt circuit okay this is basically 3 volt circuit okay or channel where we have inductor capacitor and the pad or test point and for this one also we have inductor capacitor and pad over here and we have the IC the 3 volt 5 volt control IC so here I have a question where is MOSFET directly in the back we have MOSFET as you can see here we have MOSFET and over here as you can see we have other component and of course this is the CPU as you can see circuit always for the cpu you gonna find not just one channel but two or three or more this is the first channel do you see each inductor means a channel this is a channel this is the second channel okay and in the back we gonna find as you can see here we have mosfets okay this is basically mosfets and capacitor for the first channel and this is two mosfets 10 channel capacitor for the signal channel and over here we have the CPU control IC. So now let's troubleshoot and diagnose this motherboard. I'm going now to teach you the steps that you have to or you should follow if you want to repair any no power or deed motherboard. So let's get started. So first, when you get a dead motherboard or a no power motherboard, first you should make a visual inspection. Please do not ignore and neglect visual inspection. So in my experience, I respect the visual inspection. So more than 40 persons of failure that I repair in laptop motherboards and computer motherboards, I repair it just using the visual inspection. Using the visual inspection, I can spot easily the problem. So for example, for this motherboard, it has a problem. So if you get, for example, like this motherboard and you begin by testing the inductors, diodes, etc. using the multimeter, you're just wasting time. Please respect the process. The process is to do the visual inspection. For example, for this motherboard, you can see that this motherboard is good, as you can see, but it has a problem over here. This is a very clear problem, as you can see here. Do you see this IC? Here we have a hole over here. This is a blue one IC. So you can just replace this IC and that's it. The motherboard will work properly. Why wasting time and checking all components using the multimeter? Please respect the visual inspection. So how to do the visual inspection? I show you how. So always you should locate the input of the motherboard. So basically here we have the input. This is just DC jack. Basically this is not the, the, the DC jack. We have over here a cable, okay, that we can connect, as you can see, to this plug. Here over here we have the DC jack, as you can see. So first of all, if you have this problem, you should begin with the input, okay? So this is how I can do the visual inspection. So first, by checking the DC jack, as you can see, I can check the DC jack if it is good or not. Then I can check the cable, the state of cable. Then over here, 
these two switches are good here we have inductor okay we have another inductor this is the charge IC it seems to, to be good its pins are good here we have the current sense resistor also good the ceramic capacitors are good okay then we can move on here we have two inductors basically we have L means inductors this inductor also are good okay so this inductors basically we have you, you will find here 19 volts so if there is any failed inductor over here the motherboard will stop working so then we can move on to the super IO so the super IO as I told you before is the first responsible of the power in the whole motherboard okay so if there is any problem here the motherboard will stop working why because this super IO gives the 3.3 volt to the power switch or on off button so without 3.3 volt in the on off button even if you press the button nothing will happen so also the SIO gives the 3.3 volt to the BIOS in the pin number 8 of the BIOS so if there is any failure in this IC the motherboard will stop working then you can proceed and check over here the 3 volt and 5 volt circuit here the IC is good seems to be good so the capacitors so you can even check capacitors like this it's okay okay then here as you can see we have another IC this IC seems to be the VCCP control IC then we have ICH so the BIOS seems to be good then here we have the processor we have this are good inductors this tantalum capacitor you can check the soldering here if there is any dry soldering or not then go directly and check this IC basically as you can see here this IC basically is to control IC for the RG45 okay and then go directly and check the audio control IC as you can see over here and then this IC this IC basically is the control IC for the VGA connector this VGA connector and then check also the back of the motherboard the other side as you can see here always using the same working principle we will begin from the input so here we have the current sense resistor okay this is inductor here we have this MOSFETs are good, serum capacitors, we have diodes over here, please pay attention. Those diodes here, as you can see here, are not Zener diodes. This is basically normal diodes. The Zener diodes contain a blue line here. Here, those diodes contain a black wire here. So, I will show you a Zener diode. So as you can see here, we have Zener diode. Do you see this blue line? This is basically the cathode. And this one, this is normal diode with the black line. This one also normal diode, this one also normal diode. So the only Zener diode here is this one. So back to our motherboard. So then you can move on and check this IC. Basically, this is the CPU control IC. Okay, the MOSFETs, you can check here. Okay, the back of the CPU, if all the serum capacitors are good, okay, and then move on, check the whole motherboard. If you find any anormal state, then you can check it. So the motherboard seems to be good. So after the visual inspection, we will begin, as you can see, by checking whether we get here 19 volt or not we can just plug the adapter and check whether we have 19 volt here or not i will plug the adapter but let's go step by step so i can plug the adapter or just check the continuity for this cable as you can see here so here basically we have two red wires means this is 19 volt and two black wires this is basically the ground 
So the spin over here, as you can see, in the middle is connected to these red wires. So this is for 19 volt. And over here we have ground. As you can see, these two pins in the sides. So let's check it using the multimeter. So we can use, as you can see here, the continuity option. So to check the continuity, you have to use continuity option. I can just put one probe here in the middle over here and put the other probe here, as you can see. Do you see the first pin, the second pin? means these red wires or the, the high pins are okay so let's check now the ground so as you can see guys no continuity you see no continuity so let's check the other side so let's check the other side okay Oh, now continuity. So the only problem with this motherboard is just this cable, as you can see. So we should normally replace this one and go ahead and troubleshoot in the motherboard, but no problem. Even if we detect that this is the problem for this motherboard, I'm going to proceed and to teach you all steps for this mother all steps that you have to use to troubleshoot a no power or a deal motherboard so so guys let's make two parts for this course okay this is basically the the first part okay and tomorrow i will do the the second part and the last part where i will teach you the next steps okay so please stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe, like and share the video. And for anyone who wants to join me in my Patreon page, you are very welcome. I can be your mentor and assist you and help you via WhatsApp until you solve any problem you have, including computer motherboard problems, laptop motherboard problems, tablet motherboard problems, and other device problems. So you are very welcome. Thank you very much and see you tomorrow with part two.